Hi everyone. Thanks for uh, tuning in and watching this on Very Paranormal. Um, we have a very exciting uh, new uh, show um, with uh, celebrity pet psychic uh, Jackie Weaver. And um, sort of, I, I don't know, and it's like Dr. Doolittle, she talks to the animals and it's amazing. <laughs> and uh, we also have with us uh, Jackie Dennison, who is the, uh, one of the hosts and psychics in Rescue Mediums. Hi, everybody. And uh, is the founder of the uh, Clairvoyant Academy. And I'm Michael Lamport, and I am the producer and the narrator of Rescue Mediums. And um, we are just going to see what happens with this first episode and uh, ask Jackie Weaver a, a bunch of questions. So, um, Jackie Dennison, <laughs> do you want to pose the first question? This is the, the two J's. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Jackie D and Jackie W. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what is so lovely um, is, um, you know, just as we've uh, come on, just before we went on air, um, I chose to wear a butterfly necklace today. And as soon as you came on, Jackie, you've got butterflies behind you. I mean, yeah. how in tune are we before we even start? Absolutely. <laughs> Look, I'm just wearing a cat shirt. <laughs> You're so in tune. <laughs> well, you know, today in honour of it being, you know, uh, the Celebrity Pet Psychic Show, um, I do have a few friends behind me. Oh yes, you do. You can see a few little friends behind me uh, who may want to talk to you at some point, but we'll see. But we're going to get started with um, uh, one of the uh, first questions um, that I would like to know is when, when did you first discover that you could communicate with animals? Well, it's something when I was young, um, I would know things but didn't realise why I knew them and I was brought up on a farm and it, I had a huge um, connection with animals but it wasn't until late on in life when I got to just over 40 um, I had what was classed as terminal cancer so I survived that but it completely opened my mind up and I thought I was going to heaven so it's, my mind was just totally changed and then beautifully spirit brought an animal communicator to me and she just chatted away and said, oh, you can do this. And I'm like, yeah. And she goes, no. And asked the general questions, you know, do you know things before they happen? Do you have dreams that come true? And I'm like, yeah. And she said, because you're psychic. And I was like, oh. And the penny just dropped as to why I would know stuff. And like, um, I was married to a horse dentist. I'd be working, he'd be working on a horse and say like, suddenly my back would start to really hurt. And I was like, oh, my back's so sore. And I didn't realize I was picking up from the horse. I had no idea until I was taught how to do it. And then I recognized it. Right. So, so you were actually feeling the conditions that the horse. Yeah. And so if the horse had, say, uh, you know, it, its back left leg was a little bit tender, you would feel your. Ab absolutely. Yes. So on a reading, I'll get a feeling and I'll just say to people, oh, I'm aware of my left hind leg because I'd be a horse. Um, I, you know, is there any issue with there? And hopefully, normally, is yes, that's why we need to speak to you. Yeah. That, that's interesting because when I'm doing a, a reading, um, you know, obviously with humans, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, it's the same sort of thing where you get a feeling of, um, you know, or maybe uh, someone has a, a chest condition or, yes. you know, has had a heart murmur or something like that. Um, so that's when I'm doing readings for people sitting with me. I, I can pick up those feelings from the person that I'm doing the reading for. So yes. You may have had the condition. However, I also pick up the feeling. So say someone has passed over with um, a stroke condition or a heart attack. Yeah. I, I can pick up on that. Does that work the same with animals? Do you, do you, can you pick up that with animals? In yes. Exactly the same. And <clears throat> interesting, as you know, like um, sometimes our information is, you know, we're not quite sure why we're given it. And earlier today I was doing a spirit cat and it showed me a picture of his back legs completely out behind him. And I, and I was thinking, oh, if you had an accident or a thrombosis, why are your back legs back? And I did say to her, I'm seeing this vision. And she went, oh, no, I don't understand that. It wasn't that. And I said, oh, OK. And then 
chatting on a bit more, then it turned out um, we went further and on a scan, he was completely anaesthetized and they, what they'd done is put him with his legs backwards so he was completely flat out so that they could scan him like like through his head and stuff. So wow. that's where that came from. Wow. Yeah. A lot of information to get, isn't it? When the owner goes, no, that's not what I... <laughs> That's true. That's and really, then you just yeah. say with human that. readings, as I call them, you just yeah. have to push for further, more information, you know, and you keep getting bits and then all of a sudden it just slots into place. Wow. Wow. Do you have a question, Michael, that you'd like? Yeah. To I'm, 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 this is um, probably a crazy question, uh, Jackie, that you've been asked uh, probably a thousand times. <laughs> but, um, and I don't know why, because I... I err on the side of humor, usually. Um, <laughs> when you, this is crazy, when you go into a zoo, do you hear the animals? Like, does the bear go like, hey, how you doing? And the giraffe goes like, I'll stick my neck out for you, lady. I mean, do you hear the animals talk? <laughs> not in that way because I can always say to people it's like us humans can talk when you go in a pub not everybody shouts and hello you can talk to no, me that's true. yeah but we we um we actually go and specifically ask and I have done funny enough recently I've forgotten about this a client came back to me with I think it was a dog but she said i said oh i recognize your name she said oh yes you've done some work before and um i chatted to two elephants that she was helping um regarding a zoo and the strange thing was that they when they were talking to me they described themselves as i'm the bigger one smaller one so the whole <laughs> conversation and the smaller one says and the bigger one says yeah <laughs> so they so when you communicate with them so they, they do have a sense of humor Oh, on, honestly, I have such a laugh. And even on spirit readings, when you think it's going to be really sad, oh boy, don't animals want to make you laugh? Yeah. Now, uh, who, uh, for, for, for like domestic pets, uh, for people that are watching that have a dog or a cat, um, and I'm only using those two as an example, um, which one of them is the more humorous, do you think? Well, I, I actually would say even Stevens that some have got as in humans big personality small but I'll give an example of um, a funny one um, yesterday from a dog of per saying something I just thought was so sort of slightly odd but funny and um, she was on about she had the dog's ashes and she said oh she said it might sound strange but I put them beside me you know on the tea while I'm watching television and he said, oh, that's fine. He said, but you wouldn't want to take me shopping. He said, people would think that was really strange. <laughs> and she said to me, she, she said, she said, yeah, I, won't. And I, said, I always took the dog shopping. She'd even taken him into shops that you weren't allowed dogs. And so it just went on. So, so, so imagine if you took a casket and just put it on the floor while you're looking at something and pick it up and walk on. People would just label you as really strange. <laughs> and it just and the dog was just feeding us for fun. It was great. That is great. I mean, I, 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 I when I talk to my cat, um, it's usually to say things like, "Stop doing that," or uh, "You're a good boy." Um, <laughs> and uh, he looked at me uh, this morning before we started doing this, and um, I, I don't know, but I thought. He said to me that um, this this horrible yeah. coronavirus that's going around the world that cats and dogs um, can't transmit it, but as a cat, I wish I could because <laughs> <laughs> he's a bit mean. Oh, bless! <laughs> but he's lovely. Yeah. But most cats are just their own people, aren't they? Yeah, but some cats are actually very like dogs. It's very, it's unbelievable. Some are just so like, and I just think they're just like little people or little dogs. And you can whistle them and they come, they act like that. And yeah, some, yes, use their house as a hotel. But um, yeah, <laughs> but, um, some of them have got amazing personalities. And even yeah. rabbits. I am just staggered what amazing pets rabbits make. 
you know they're not just dumb little animals that should sit in a cage they can be really absolutely fabulous pets yes I, 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 I've, I've seen that a friend of mine um in uh, in canada here uh he has two rabbits and um he and his wife uh they play with them in the backyard yeah like all the time because the rabbits just like want to play and they don't run away they just want to play yeah absolutely uh, sweet yeah my granddaughters have got uh, two rabbits they've had them you know from very tiny so they're still uh, still very young um but they they got their own little house outside it's a two-story little house and then they've got their own little green area where they play and they're so friendly but boy are they mischievous they're really mischievous you know you put up some netting thinking they can't get out but they can it's a challenge <laughs> well, what's, the, what's the strangest animal that you've ever communicated with jackie um I'd say actually it was for fun. It was a kangaroo. Oh my god! <laughs> and it was in Australia, Australia or Tasmania. I mean, Tasmania. And basically, she had um, a little wallaby that she'd hand reared. So that was amazing to chat to because she could. Obviously, the point is you need to be able to validate information. Otherwise, you know, people think like we just make anything up. So anyway, we chatted to this little one, and then she said, "Oh, while you're at it," she said, "If you want, she said, I've got a kangaroo that's coming in, like giving us some problems, and he was called White Eye." And then anyway, because he had a white eye, and um, he was coming in, and she was feeding them, and then he got to the point of like he was rattling the food container trying to get into it. So we went into a bit of a negotiation saying, if you keep doing that, you're going to get nothing. So we had this amazing conversation with him. Yeah, so that, that was just, yeah. And did, he stop, did he stop rattling the fruit container afterwards? He did, actually. He did. Yeah. <laughs> and I always say, like, I'm amazed that <clears throat> some animals don't change, but some do. And I'm staggered when somebody comes back and said, unbelievably, next day, changed. And that absolutely proves communication. And yeah. if I'm doing a yard of horses and I've got a horse that's being a bit of a monkey for whatever reason, I sometimes say to the owner, don't tell anybody you've had a communication. So when their horse, if it changes, actually does what it's supposed to do, they go, wow, your horse is really behaving now. What have you done? Well, actually, I got someone to talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> You negotiate quite a lot then. You have to negotiate quite a lot at times. Yes. Yeah. 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 And I that's it's the same as uh, with humans. And it's just funny because just as you were talking, this little one here decided he 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 decided he heard your voice and he wanted to come and investigate to see who's talking. Oh hey yeah. <laughs> Bless. Do you find that animals do that? That they just uh, come to you wherever you are? Yeah, I find I, I have got um animals can see auras and feelings whatever and i went into a field of ponies recently hadn't met any of them mm. and this pony just made a beeline for me and my friend feeds feeds this pony so every day I paid no attention to him whatsoever and it was just and she she was coming and she was like so all in a really weird way and he's good no no come here and she was like no and it, she could obviously sense that you know there was just something different about me yeah. yeah so um but it doesn't happen all the time but yeah some are very open to it and um, I, I, I think i think jack it, it's really true though isn't it that animals have a really good uh perception sense maybe yes. better than we do as humans true like you, you you can animals seem to know you know whether it's birds or whatever they seem to know when a storm is coming yes. they seem to know when like all of that sort of stuff yeah look and at the we, tsunami. Go, we go out and we leave our umbrella at home yeah like the, when the tsunami happened the animals were gone they yeah. knew before anything happened mm. yeah, yeah so but talking about uh, when um animals choosing what to do or understanding people i actually because you can obviously ask questions of animals i actually asked a cat why do cats um, go and sit on someone's lap that they know does not like cats? And the, yeah, and the answer was because they look really rude shoving them off in company. <laughs> Can you imagine sitting there going, yeah, you can't do anything about this. <laughs> that's, that's, that's cat humour. That's great. It is. <laughs> do, do the 
ever tell you things about their owners that you don't pass on to the to the owners at times? Uh, not really. Um, and I put that in a book a couple of times and saying like, you know, they're not going to say, oh, let me kiss the postman or anything like that. But they do drop things that I'm allowed to say. And I can mm. remember a horse saying to me one day, it was so funny, it just said, you can tell her she might be behind the stables, but I can t- still hear her swearing. It's <laughs> 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 <So, pff>, busted. <laughs> <laughs> Who do you think is the... Uh, the- most humorous animal that you've come across? Oh, do you know they all, I, I, the most animals I tend to do is cats, dogs, um, and horses. But um, I'd say even small ones, if they, their personality, they've got that lovely strong personality, they'll have a sense of humor. So it doesn't matter, you know, what animal they are, to be honest, you know. I've even chatted to a skunk and I actually think that one was <sighs> funny as well. <laughs> but actually my first experience of a skunk oh i was working for a client in america and um chatting to a pony and we're chatting and then i got this awful smell and i went oh i said i've just had this horrible smell and um she goes oh that'll be the skunk <laughs> I was like, all right okay <laughs> so were you in America or were you doing that via like a photograph or something or yeah just working at a distance by a photograph yeah yeah, yeah. so it's just lucky because it can work anywhere it just shows how powerful that is how you can oh. you have that ability to be able to link in uh to someone through distance I know that um I, I, I do distance readings uh yeah. with humans so but you can do that uh, also with animals which is uh, absolutely it, it's it's all just it's the same isn't it and i just i i know it's on a wavelength but i can't explain exactly how it works i'm just you know so grateful that it does yeah do you find jackie that uh, animals uh gravitate to you like if you're uh if you go to somebody's house and like mine for example and i have a cat yeah would you find that animals will gravitate to you yes and and often um like they'll someone will say gosh she's not normally like that with anybody and they'll just you know they just i think sense that you know um there's something on the same level as them or something about me and again animals are so sensitive to energy absolutely so you know they you know they know what was the most um the most reason for somebody uh, asking you to uh do a reading for their pet um do you, do you find that it's like you know the the pets in distress or um what, what's the most thing that you're asked there is on living animals i'd say uh behavioral a lot mm. of like rescue um if they've got like a medical problem going on although you know we don't say you know obviously i don't diagnose i just give them what i get and actually i recently had a cat who had um had a leg pinned and it started it's give me this feeling in my hip and i'm like i don't know what this is and she said oh she said he's got a pin in his leg and it just said so clearly needs to come out and i went that's what i hear so she she said i agree so she said she went to the vets and she actually said which i always said you know probably don't tell the vet but she did and she just said um someone's spoken to my cat and said this pin needs to come out and she said yes it does and it's made a huge difference to the cat because he'd also been putting up with a discomfort for quite a long time since the pins come out He's really actually, in his 10 years old, really come into himself again. So it just shows you. Wow. That's really wonderful. Uh, that, that, a story like that is absolutely wonderful. Because we as humans, you know, when you've got something wrong with you, we know that that's, something's got to change. You know, you've got to choose Exactly, something. and it can <laughs> bring us down, you know, in our way, doesn't it? And then suddenly the pain goes. Yeah, but the most beautiful thing about the connection, as you know, it's all synchronicity. On my next book cover, it's her cat that is on the front of the book. And it was a picture done by an American artist. And they've got like a tartan collar on it. And it's beautiful, set in a lovely background. So I said, oh, do you think I can use this? And she said, yeah, I'm sure. So then I got into the cover and stuff and I sent it over to her. And she said, I'll send it over to the artist. And the day she sent it, it was the artist's birthday. Wow. And she said, I'm just so 
pleased to see my work on a book like that. So wow. just, the synchronicity was beautiful. That's Fabulous. great. Fabulous. How many books have you written, Jackie? I'm on number 10 now. Wow. <laughs> I know. And I just, where can people get hold of them? If they, if they... On, on Amazon, it's yeah. the, the Animal Psychic is, you know, um, and I think uh, eight of them are all animal communication stories and stuff. And then the other one that I've done is about pet grief. And that's probably one of the wow. main reasons that people come to me for readings is they're broken hearted and losing their animals. Yeah. So linking to them, proving that they live on in spirit, same as you do for humans. Yes. Um, it just, honestly, you can just unbreak people's hearts. And mm. it just, it's, yeah. it's an honor to do it. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll put a link up on Very Paranormal because I know I've, I've, I've had um, one dog and two cats pass and, uh, and I've also had humans, very like family and everything. Yeah. And uh, I personally, I grieved more for the passing of my pets than I did yeah. uh, for mm. my mom, which is terrible to say. Well, and, no. And, um, and, Exactly. Everybody says that, but I address that in my pet grief book because I say it's, we look after our animals like a child. Logically, we know our parents are going to go before us or they should. Okay. Yeah. Our, our animals are like children. So I say to people, don't feel guilty. It's a different relationship and it's completely and utterly understandable. And it's putting, also using techniques like you know, like if you put something in your head and drop it into your subconscious, it can come back to help you when you need. So one of my things is like people struggle, they go to work or whatever, and someone goes, oh, it was just a cat. So I say to people, in good times and everything, just log into your subconscious, repeat it a few times, just say the words like, if someone says, oh, it's just a dog, just a cat, I will pity them for they have not had the love of an animal like I have. Yeah. And you say it a few times, put it in your head, and then when someone says that line, do you know, it just dissolves it. I, 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 I think that's, that, that's beautiful. Mm. Um, I know that, um, and a lot of people are unable, if sadly their animal has to be put down for medical reasons or whatever, um, a vet friend of mine said um, one of the most important things is even if it's so distressing for the owner to be in the room yeah. when the pet is put down, because she said that uh, when they're doing it, if you're not in the room, that's the last, that's the first person they look for. Yeah. As, as, as dying. They look around like, where's my family? Well, Who's yes, say, saying that if I go from the animal's perspective and I dealt with one of these today, because of COVID, a lot of yep. people are not allowed to be with their pets when they're put to sleep. So that's caused a yeah. huge distress for people. And the lady today said, I didn't get to say goodbye. And the animal said, yes, you did. And she said, but I wasn't there when he was put to sleep. He said, no, but you did get to say goodbye. You said it all before he left you. And I said, it's like 15 minutes. And she said, yeah, it was 15 minutes. And they brought him back. So, you know, although, like, this is why I love my work is because you can ask for the animal. I can't, I obviously, you know, it's not my answers. I just asked them and he just went, yes, you did. And she went, oh yeah, actually, you're right. I did get to say goodbye. And often animals are really kind of not with it when they're being put to sleep as well. There's all different things. Yeah. It's useful to know that. It's very handy to, to, um, to have that information there. It's very comforting. In that, in that way so yeah I'm sure that the the book in particular about um, pet grief is, is one that would be very very comforting to a lot of people absolutely and uh, it just addresses so many things I was and you'll they'll find in the book I, I was just basically channeled to do it and mm -hmm. you know it was to do with my dog Sally and the whole thing just panned out but even when I read it afterwards I thought gosh there's things in here that can help humans because <laughs> yes, you know yeah. and just understanding and I even now working with clients when they're they're you know totally in grief I just say well if you can just take a second to now look back into your life there's something that is not emotionally hurting you now but did maybe years ago and I always say like when I lost my dad when I was 17 
So they, I said, just cast your mind back. And I said, can you think of anything and like, yes. I said, right. So now you realize you did come through that. You started to smile again. So that now tells you, do you know something? You will be all right. You've done it before. You'll just go through that curve again. That's Once really, really good advice. Yeah. But you said at the beginning of this uh, conversation that you uh, uh, recovered from uh, cancer. Yes. Well, congratulations. That's fantastic. Thank you. Um, that, I mean, that's amazing. Yeah. Well, I, <laughs> I, I'm blessed. I was, I was given, they told me after I had stage four cancer. I had it here, there, oh. and everywhere. Yep. And they, they put me into the terminal ward on a lot of morphine. And um, they said they didn't expect me to come out. They gave me four weeks to live. But the beautiful thing is, I know, is I actually did this type of work for my, for my oncologist secretary. Because when I got so over, because I'd always like going every three months, or whatever. And they were like, okay. And anyway, so I worked for her and told her stuff about her dog. So of course she told her, her boss. And um, I actually, my first book I ever did, I went and gave a copy into the unit for the oncology unit for people to be able to sit and read when they're having chemo or whatever. And my, my oncology people said, we have no idea how you do it, but you know, you've proved it and thank you. So I said, thank you to them. Wow. Amazing. Wow, well, congratulations. That's incredible. Yeah. Well, we've, um, we're so glad you've uh, overcome all of the cancer. <laughs> but you're, you're able to uh, talk to us now. And um, obviously something wonderful has come from that time when um, you, you had this all, almost uh, metamorphosis, really, transformational time. Absolutely. You are um, working in a spiritual way with animals. We're very thankful for that. Um, yeah. Just thinking about the next episode, because I'm sure the viewers would absolutely love to see more of you. Uh, we'd certainly like to chat more uh, to a whole load of questions here that we couldn't get through today. <laughs> um, but um, what if um, we were to ask uh, the viewers if they wanted to send in um, some photographs on, of maybe the, they've got a pet that they've got a problem with uh, and they'd like to know um, why uh, this is happening to the pet and uh, maybe if they send the photographs in would you be um, willing to do a reading from the photograph yes I can do that and maybe not even necessarily problems just that they you know want to hear from their animals or even a spirit reading okay. what, whatever um, there's little bits of information I ask is the name of the pet obviously in the orders but the name age um, and um, their, their gender because do you know something animals don't care if they're a boy or a girl but people do <laughs> so, yeah that's so refreshing <laughs> yeah and if they've, if they've passed over when they've passed over and the other thing i always say to people is how long have they had their pet because sometimes they've only had them say um say if it's five years old and they've only had it for a year yeah sometimes it's because they've come through rescue or whatever and we have to yeah. deal with things like that as well Okay, good. Yeah. That's excellent. Thank well, what you. Are, sorry, what, what, one of the funny things, though, um, I, I guess I don't know if we leave on this note, but one of the funny things that I've read somewhere is that because of this COVID uh, coronavirus thing, uh, dogs look at you because you're trapped in your house and they just go, this is great that you're here. And cats look at you and sort of say, did you just get fired? You don't go to work anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, bless. I know. It's been a beautiful time for people to spend quality time with their pets. Yeah. Where yes. did you get three months off to go, yeah, I can spend time with my dog. I, I know. 80, 81 miles uh, one month during COVID just because I could. Yeah, exactly. My dog, bless him. So maybe all these animals are going to have uh, real severe personality disorders now that everybody's going back to work. Yeah. There's, there's going to be a huge, which me, I know I'm going to get working. There could be a huge no. problem with animals that suddenly are distraught because their owners have gone. Yeah. So it's yeah. like we, I say to people, start weaning yourself off again so good. they can get used to yeah. it. Otherwise, it's going to be a calamity. Yeah, good so, advice. Yeah. Very good yeah. advice. 
Well, it's been wonderful talking to you, Jackie. It's uh, been a joy. Thank you. Thank you. No, thank you. And well, thanks both of you. And um, <laughs> let's hope that we do, um, when we do episode two, um, let, let's hope that we get some other viewer questions and um, some more stuff uh, from uh, Jackie, uh, yeah. Pet Psychic Celebrity. And let's see, uh, and we'll put a link up to you. And um, th this was fantastic. It's, it's really heartwarming that you, uh, ha you have such an affinity for uh, wow. pet. Thank you. Well, they need a voice and um, I'm happy to give animals a voice. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. Bye. 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 Bye.